Caching is a really important part of any performance system. So let's look at entity-based caching, which solves a lot of the complexities that GraphQL brings to caching. So to help visualize this, we have a little astronaut here, which represents a REST response. It's made up of multiple parts. And so when a client requests a REST endpoint, we have to assemble the response. We have the legs, the body, and the helmet, each of these representing different fields within our REST endpoint. In order to send the response back to our client, we have to then assemble him, like so. Now, this endpoint is cacheable. We can just take an exact copy of the astronaut and send that back to the client. But what if we had different requirements? If we wanted the little guy without his helmet, for example, well, that's not possible today with REST. Additionally, if I wanted to say add a flag to our little guy, this would be a second request. And this is what GraphQL aims to solve for. We can make a request for just the body, the legs, without the helmet. What if we wanted to also have a client request hair on top of our little guy and not a helmet? We had to do some reassembly. We had to take the flag off, we had to take his helmet off, and we had to add some hair. You may have noticed that because of this reassembly, it's not easily cacheable. We can't exactly return back a copy like we could with REST, where it's the same set of data every time. But thankfully, entity-based caching has a solution for this. So instead of caching the entire response, what if we could cache the pieces that don't change? For example, our little figure here doesn't change whatsoever, but if we wanted to say add hair and a flag, which in this case may represent uncacheable data, we could add that to our figure and reuse what we already had. Because we're now able to match what's been already cached and what has been uncached, we can now return the response much more quickly and more efficiently. So let's take a look at a blog API to see how entity-based caching can help with solving for caching needs when using GraphQL. So as you can see, we have a schema here for our blog API. We have a query type, our post type, and our user type for our queries. If we look at our post type, which represents a blog post, we can see we have a number of fields, and some of these may be cacheable, and some of these might not be. If we look at a hero image, we can cache that likely for a very long time. It's an image asset that likely isn't going to be updated very frequently. However, our content is likely something we want to be very lightly cached. It's data that's going to change potentially quite frequently. We may have updates to an article as breaking news happens, for example. Now, if we make a query here, we are just asking for our hero image and our URL. This would be just like our little figure where we had just the body and the legs. Say we wanted to add the helmet, or in this case, our content, we will then make a query that looks like the second one. But this content field now makes this entire response almost uncacheable as the cache duration on content is much shorter. Going back to our figure example, this would be similar to us reassembling the entire response each time because we don't know what can and can't be cached. Now, what we've been dealing with has been a singular GraphQL service. But what if we introduce GraphQL Federation? In GraphQL Federation, a graph is called a supergraph and is composed of many smaller GraphQL services called subgraphs. Each of these subgraphs can define a special type called an entity. These entities can be extended and referenced across subgraph boundaries. And so this introduces complexity into caching. So here we have our federated blog post API. And you can see we have three subgraphs. We have our asset subgraph, post subgraph, and users subgraph. Each of these handles different entities. In the post, we have an entity defined as post. And you can see it's denoted as such by using the key directive. Each post has a special directive on it called cache control. Within each cache control directive, we can set the max age, which is the duration of which a type can be cached for. So in this case, we've set the max age for 300 seconds. We can also apply this directive on fields. This field here, content, has a cache control max age of 60 seconds. It only applies if that field is requested. So we would only get a max age of 60 seconds if the content field is requested. The cache control directive will use the most restrictive option. If you requested the content field of a post, the max age will be 60 seconds. Now in Federation, when a client sends a request, that request may be converted into many different subgraph requests. Those subgraph requests will fetch other data for those entities in order to complete the client's request. If I were to request a list of posts and then grab the author and the author's username for each post, 
First, we may make a request to the post subgraph to get the list of posts, and then a subsequent request to get the author's username. Now, what's special about entity-based caching is that when we make that entity fetch on the second request, so in this case to the user subgraph, if we had a list of posts and one referenced user one and another listed user two, each of those would be entered into the entity cache individually. Now, this is really powerful because when we have all of our cached entries for a given request, if our request only returned back users one and user two, we could reuse the data that's in our cache. If we have none of them, we'll make the request like normal. Nothing changes. But the last flow, and the one that I think is the most interesting, is the ability to use a mix of cached and uncached data together. If we have the cached data available, we will remove them from the subsequent request to the subgraph and instead a request for only the uncached ones instead, thereby reducing the overall subgraph payload. We can use our cached data, add our uncached data, and send this back to the client as a full response. This is what makes entity caching great. It allows you to reduce overall subgraph latency, subgraph requests, and subgraph payload size, and more, and allows you to get quick performance wins. 